Hello everyone, this is Steven again, and in this video I wanted to show you how you can make some custom brushes in Adobe Animate 2021. This is something that I get asked quite a lot. Uh, how do I create some customization in the brushes rather than using some default brushes? Just so you know that there's a brushes panel over here that you can kind of pull out and choose different brushes. You know, it's got a whole bunch of different ones that you can choose from, some patterns, um, some strokes. But if you want to create your own, what you can end up doing is there's two different kind of modes to do that. One is uh, using a stroke and one is using a stroke and a fill. So uh, the difference between the two is one, you'll use a paintbrush and the other one, you'll use a pencil. So the pencil can't use fills. It's only lines. It's only strokes. But in this video, I'm just going to show the paintbrush and I'll do a later video where I go into pencil tool. So the first thing to point out is I'm using sort of the default workspace. I'm using essentials. I'm in the essentials right now, which is fine. I have my own workspace that I usually use, but I wanted to show this just so this is normally when you start up Adobe Animate, this is what it looks like. So I wanted to kind of start fresh from that so everybody can kind of see that. I have a whole video where I talk about how to customize your workspace and you can check that if you really want to. So I'm gonna go over here to the toolbox because I don't really like it docked like this. So you're gonna drag up over here. If you haven't seen how to do this before, I've got a whole video on this too. So I'm just kind of resize it. And the one thing you'll notice is there's a lot of buttons that you can click and hold and you can select a different one. So you can customize this if you don't already know by clicking these three little dots right here. And then I'm gonna go down and I can add different brushes or I can add different tools or I can remove different tools or I can customize these. Like I like to take the sub selection tool and kind of I'll keep that one there and drag it out and I'll bring that one over here. So that's the selection tool and the sub selection tool. But I can do the same thing here with a brush. So I'm gonna use this paint brush tool. I'm gonna bring it over here. And you'll notice it kind of creates these different sections when I do that. So there's the brushes and the creation tools and then other, you know, all the other tools in the toolbox. So that's what I'm going to start with right there. And I'm going to just go ahead and close that. Again, if you click those three dots, it opens up this. So you can modify your toolbox. And then if you want to close that, you can kind of click over here or you can click here and go to close. So either way, so it'll save those. So uh, here's the brush. Here is just to kind of go over these really quick. And I have videos that go through all these. This is the fluid brush. This right here is the paintbrush, and you can kind of see them come over here. When I have the tool selected, it shows the tool properties. Then I can go over here and go to the classic brush, right? Whatever you can use to create a line and a fill, you can create a brush with. So, and this is different for the pencil and the brush, so I'm just using the brush. And there's two different types of brushes that you can create. One is an art brush, and the other one's a pattern brush. So I'm gonna start with uh, an art brush just so you can kind of see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of make, you know, an interesting, you know, line pattern here. And then I'm going to select that. When I have it selected, just so you know, I have the object selection mode off, right? So I, I'm not drawing in the object mode, just so you know, this one's off, right? But I have this selected. And when I do that, it when I have it selected, it's going to show you the object tab here in the properties panel. And at the very top, you'll see the row of buttons. And this last one right here says Create New Paintbrush. So I'm going to click that, Create New Paintbrush. And then what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever I've drawn out here and have selected, and it's going to use that as the selection for the paintbrush. So again, I said there's an art brush and a pattern brush. So I'm going to start with the art brush. This is going to be its new name. So I'm just going to call, you know, Paintbrush 1. Really fascinating name there for my paintbrush. I could call it squiggle, whatever I want to, and that's the way it's gonna show up in the panel. So there's a couple different options down here. One, you can kind of flip back and forth. So if I drew it this way, I can flip it. So it's instead of going from left to right, it goes from right to left. I can flip it upside down or you know, however I want. And I can even flip the artwork, you know, so it's upside down and backwards or whatever. So you can use that to kind of manipulate it so you're not bound to what you just drew right in there. Then you have these three options here. You have scale proportionally, which I'm gonna make one of each so I can show you what it does. So, and actually, uh, since I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna call this, you know, paintbrush scale, right? And it's gonna scale it proportionally as I draw out, and you'll kind of see that, right? Uh, I'm not gonna choose any other ones right now. I'm not gonna choose any other options. However, if I'm using 
a Cintiq, uh, like I'm using a Cintiq right now, uh, there's going to be a minimum width and a uh, minimum width for tilt and pressure, right? And a maximum. So we're just going to leave that at 1% and 100. So if I use a lot of pressure sensitivity with the pen on the Cintiq, if I press down harder, or you know any kind of pen display that that has pressure sensitivity the line will uh, follow that like the line will use that pressure sensitivity if i use tilt sensitivity that will you know activate that as well which is kind of cool features there's an overlap feature and i'll kind of show you what that is it's just how it goes around corners is it going to overlap so you can kind of see this little icon it will it overlap on itself or will it just make a nice little corner and try to round out that corner rather than overlapping right so I'm going to choose that default actually I'm going to choose the one where it's not going to overlap and I'm going to go ahead and click add right then I'm going to select it again again going over to object go over to create new paintbrush and in the new paintbrush it's defaulting to stretch to fit stroke length right so that means however long I draw it out and again I'll show that and I'm going to call that scale so I'm going to create one that says scale and I'm going to add that again select it and I'm going to do it one more time this is just for example so I can show you each one and then I'm going to stretch between guides and this one's a very interesting one so if you move these guides you're going to notice that it's going to stretch in these areas but not others so I'm going to choose the back here and not you know move this guide right here and I'm going to go ahead and add now, when I, since I have that, I don't need this pattern anymore. I can save it as a different file, so if I ever want to change it, make a new brush from it, I can do that. But I've just used this to make a brush, so I'm going to get rid of that. Just hit delete. Now I'm going to go to the brush. So again, we have the fluid brush, we have the paint brush, and we have a classic brush. So I'm going to just go to the paint brush, and I'm going to go to the style. And you notice that the style now looks like my pattern, and I have three different styles here. Right, so here if I hover over, I'm going to see the paintbrush scale. Here I have the paintbrush, so you can hover over and see the name. Unfortunately, I didn't give them very unique names, but this is the first one that I created. So I'm going to paint with that. When I do that, you're going to see that it's going to scale over the entire, it's using that one stroke over the entire brush stroke. So if I make it this long, it's that long. If I make it that long, it's, it's the same brush stroke over the entire length, you know, as I brush out. So I'm going to select all that and delete. And then I'm going to select the next one, right? And so this one was the one that was actually uh, scale, right? And I'll go back through those options. And I'm going to paint with this now. And you're going to see that it goes from here to here. Now I'm going to go from here to here, right? And now you see that it's scaling this right it, it's dragging it out rather than trying to keep it the same size right so you can kind of see the difference so i'm going to go back to this first one Oop, that one right there i'm going to paint that out and now let's paint one that's longer right and you see how this stretches it out but this doesn't right so that's how that one works and again, I'm going to go back. And by the way, uh, it turned on object, the object drawing mode, by the way. So when I paint out like this, you'll notice that it's an object. It's no longer like if I were to just create one, I'm going to paint with it something different. Just go to a regular line and I paint out with that. I can now turn on and off object drawing mode, right? So I've got one that's an object and one that's not. But when you're using custom brushes, it's always going to make it an object drawing, right? You don't have the option of turning it off, right? So if I go back to this one, let me let me deselect, go back to this. That's the classic brush, sorry. There's the paintbrush. And I choose that pattern. You notice that it turns that on. So it's on by default and you can't turn it off. That's just how that works. Now I'm going to go to this last one, and this is the one that I use the margins or the guides for, to scale. And as you scale that out, right, you're going to see, and I'm, let me bring up the stroke size so you can kind of see that a little bit more. Right, you can see that in the middle, it scaled that portion out, right, but these are condensed, right. So if I draw a short one, you can kind of see the difference where it's scaled out from here. I, on the end of that, I left this to not scale. So you can kind of see, and let me draw a longer one. 
So you can kind of see this scales out, but this does not. So it's kind of a mixture of the two. It's a blend of the other two types of brushes. So I'm gonna select all this and I'm gonna delete. And then I'm gonna go back to this brush and I'm just gonna draw out the first one. I'm gonna draw out the second one. And I'm gonna draw out the third one. All right, and we can kind of see those side by side or next to one another. I have to go back and turn on just a regular line. So I'm gonna change the stroke size so we can kind of see this a little bit. So let me turn it on to a smoother ink is what I use, All right? And you can use any one of the, the object modes or the drawing modes in terms of, you know, changing it from a straight line that'll straighten it out, smooth it out, or use it ink mode, which it gives you a little bit more high fidelity in your line. So then again, I'm gonna select that. Whoop. I gotta turn off object drawing mode. So again here, turn off object drawing mode because I just want the brush, right? I just want that normal brush. And then I'm gonna select that, go back to creating a new brush and here's that new brush. And here's what I was talking about. So this top one is scale proportionally. That one's the scale. The next one is stretch, so that's scale. That stretch, so it stretches to fit the length of the stroke. And then the stretch between guides allows you to, you know, kind of come down here and say, here's the area where I want you to stretch and here's where I want you to scale, right? So that's stretch and that's scale. That's between those guides. So over here, in between the guides, it's gonna act like this. And on this side of the guide, it's gonna act like this. So that's pretty much how that works. So there's a couple other things that you can do with this, which is kind of interesting. If I select this first brush, right, and I'm on the object, I have the object selected, it's going to take that brush and apply it to that object, which is just kind of cool, right? I've now just taken whatever squiggly line and I've applied that stroke or that brush to it because I'm in the object. I had the object selected and I chose the style and I can, you know, do that for each one of these. Now. This three, these three buttons over here, every time you see that, it's like a little menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and you can edit the stroke style, right? I can come back here and edit it. I can go to the brush library. It's gonna open up that library panel that I had. And then I can also manage paint brushes. So I can go ahead and delete those if I need to. I can click whatever one I want to delete. So I'm gonna, let's say I delete that one because it's being used. Um, so. I'm gonna end up having to get rid of it and then delete it. Or I could save it to the brush library. I can actually, let's say I'm gonna take all those and save to the brush library. And then I'm gonna close. And I'm gonna come over here and go to the brush library. It's also, again, over here. But now I have my brushes and here are my brushes. And I can change the name here if I want to and add more brushes and customize as many brushes as that I want. And then I can add those into here and use those different styles. Again, I can edit that stroke and then, you know, resave it and it'll save it back into that library, the brush library. Again, you can access it from here as well. So in this next part, I wanted to talk about pattern brushes, but there's a couple things that I wanted to point out about using this particular paintbrush. So when I use the paintbrush, when I paint with it and I just have the regular style, the stroke style, when I paint with it and I'm not on the object drawing mode, I don't have that enabled and I select it just so you realize that, that is a stroke, right? There's no fill to it. Like when you use the fluid brush, when I paint with it and you select it, right? It, is a, it has a fill, right? It's um, a fill to it. The, this paint brush, uh, I'm gonna go back to this one. So when I have this selected and I have other parts that I need to delete, but when you look at that, you see that it's a stroke. So when you paint with this and you use this style, if you create a brush, it is just gonna be a stroke. It's not gonna have a fill, which means you know, on this one that since it's a fill, I can go and select points around it. On this one, I can select points that uh, kind of make up the line or the stroke of this but it doesn't have any depth. It, it, it can't create any other depth with it, just to kind of point that out. 
So I'm going to delete all this and actually I could just select there and delete. So there's a couple reasons I bring that up and that's because I'm going to create a pattern brush and I'm going to create a, a pattern by making, you know, just a kind of a random pattern. So I'm going to use a rectangle and I'll fill that here. And then I'm going to select on this. I'll just kind of click and hold and I'm going to go to the oval tool. And let's say I change this to, you know, a random color and I'm going to put and I'm going to hold down shift to constrain it. Oh, and then I'm going to do it this way so I can hold it over here and then I can select it. And this is just a totally simple pattern. I'm going to let it snap to the corner so it creates this interesting pattern. And then I'm going to come back and select the whole thing. It's a similar workflow to creating the art brush but you know where I create something and then I select it but this pattern is going to be repeated. So what I'm going to be doing is repeating these two shapes over and over and over to make a brush stroke. And so I'm just creating a, a random pattern but you have to again have it all selected and then you'll see that in the properties panel over here that it's selected as an object right the tab object is selected if it's not you need to select that because that's where you find again the create new paintbrush button. So when you click that you're going to see the paintbrush options and right now it's defaulted to art brush which that's what I was using before and you'd have the same options. So if I wanted to create an art brush where it did the entire brush over that entire stroke that's what I would do. So that's what I did previously. Now I'm going to go to pattern brush and you could see already the pattern brush and this is sort of an example of what the brush would look like it's repeating the pattern over that entire stroke and you can actually see where it's kind of making these corners and that's just to show you an example of what the corners would look like right and again it's going to name it you know paintbrush so i'm going to just call it paintbrush stretch right because that's saying stretch to fit or you could call it fit whatever i'm just kind of coming up with a name that's going to make it distinctive when i pull up the brush so you can use these buttons to kind of flip it around you know, this is horizontally flipping, this is vertically fl flipping. So if you want to change it from the pattern that you have, you can do that, right? So I'll keep it like that and I'm going to call it stretch. It says down here at corners, flank artwork. And there's a none and you can see where it just, where it gets to the corners and it just doesn't put any pattern in the corner. Or you could say center the artwork where it centers it on that and it looks like it might kind of overlap a little bit. There's flank, which means that it kind of divides it a little bit and then slice where it slices it right down the center and then the next one starts sliced on the other side and then overlap where it just sort of overlaps at the corners. So depending on what you want this brush to do when it reaches the corners, the uh, I find the flank sort of does the best depending on what you really want it to do or none if you just want it to kind of all of a sudden bend, right? So I'm going to choose flank and again you have that minimum width and the maximum width right and I'm going to go ahead and add and again I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to show different examples like I did before click the button here go to pattern brush and then I'm going to go add space to fit so I'll put add space right name them better than I did last time so um, that's going to give you you can kind of see where it's sort of adding spaces to to fit the entire path Right. And so I'm going to go ahead and add that and again, select it, go here and then go to pattern brush. And then this is approximate path. So I am going to call that a PPR just for approximate. Right. And you can, when you switch between these, you can kind of see what it's doing. Right. But it's going to give you a better idea when I start painting it out. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. And again, now I don't need this anymore because I created the pattern. If you want to keep it around just to, you know, perhaps change your brush, you can modify it and change it. You can, you know, save this as a separate file if you want to, but I'm going to delete it because it's just for an example. And I'm going to go to this brush tool. And now under the style, you see this pattern and you're going to see these three different ones. So if I hover over them again, I see paintbrush stretch paintbrush add space and paintbrush approximate. So now I've named them a little bit better so we can kind of follow that along. So now when I brush with it, whoop, I need to make the stroke size bigger. So I'm going to undo, let me make that stroke size big, bigger and I paint with it. And now I have the ability 
to you know create almost like a zipper right so in a again if you you cannot turn off object mode so if i select these it's object mode but the other thing to kind of point out is when you select these it's just along it's a stroke right so this is a pattern applied to a stroke because this brush cannot use fills however i used a line and a fill to make the brush which just applies it to a line right it just applies it to this stroke pattern right so that's kind of a it's a kind of a cool way to make that pattern brush so uh, again i'm going to go back to this brush and then if i change it to say smooth you can actually get you know different capabilities out of it and, and if i go to straighten that means it's always going to kind of do these straight lines and then you could see how it joins in the corners right so it's trying to approximate that so i'm going to go ahead and delete all that but i'm just going to use that paintbrush for that first pattern and draw one at the top and then i'm going to go to the next one which this one is the uh, uh, add space and then I'm going to draw one there and I'm going to draw one there and you can kind of see sort of the difference between the two, right? So this is adding a little bit more space. You see that it adds a little bit more space there. And if I go that far, you can kind of see that, right? Hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of see that where it's, it's adding a little bit of space where that one does not. So I'm just going to end up deleting these. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of paint back on that one, the same distance here. And so we can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference in there, right? Or if I, you know, roll it like that, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a difference when it stretches, right? So it's probably a little bit easier to see it when it's bending. So let me go to the first one again, that first one, and I'll do kind of the same thing. And now you can kind of see that it's doing what it's doing a little bit different, right? So I'm going to grab these and take them out and now I'm going to go back to the brush go to this last one which was the approximate and then I'm going to draw it out and this one you can't see so much of a difference and if I do this you can then see how it kind of twists and turns a little bit so especially in the circle right you can kind of see that a little bit in the circle so I'm going to go to this one and show you that one so you see here the circle is staying fairly consistent right and then this one, right? And this one you could see it's a lot more spaced out, right? So here it's kind of stretching it in between and this doesn't stretch it so much. So that's the one that's approximate. And then this one is paintbrush add space, which is that one. So you can see the spacing is added in here where it's not in here. So it's kind of the difference. And again, it's, it's harder to see when you're just drawing a straight line, but it's easier to see when you're drawing a round or a curve or something and how that come, kind of combines. So that's how to create those. And again, you still have, I'm gonna create a new one. Again, you still have the menu button here where if you select that, you can edit the stroke. So I can go in and change it, whichever one I had selected, right? So if I choose this one, right? And then choose that edit stroke, then I can see that it's called stretch to fit. And then I can modify that if I need to change it. I can go to the brush library Right, and I can add that, you know, if it's added to the library, those are the previous ones that I created. So you could add that to the library, see the library from there. And then I'm gonna choose manage paintbrushes. And there again, I can kind of select these and add them to the library if I want. But I'm gonna show you if I get rid of all these, I'm gonna just delete them all off the stage, right? And then I go to that brush and I, let's say I go to this last one and I'm gonna go to manage paintbrushes select that last one and I'm going to delete and it's gone. So previously I had shown how I was going to delete it, but since it was on the stage, it was drawn out on the stage, you can't delete it, right? So I can kind of delete each one of these or save it to the brush library. So if I do that, then when I go to the brush library, I can see that it's now, you know, added in there and I've got the name of it and it's called Untitled 2, but I can change that as well. But that's a kind of a different topic all on its own, right? But that's how you can arrange brushes and save them and make changes and use the pattern brush as well as an art brush in that way. So I hope this helps and good luck on your ability to start using these brushes and patterns and creating art brushes.